Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the One Nation Summit. It's the second day. Today we will welcome the Women Voices of the Ocean Forum. And to introduce this forum, it's a great pleasure to welcome Mrs. Monica Medina, Assistant Secretary of Oceans and Environmental Affairs for the United States. Thank you.
Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. bonjour Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Wonderful to be here uh, among so many extraordinary women and leaders in this space. Thank you for the introduction, and I want to just first say what an honor it is to be a part of this tremendous panel. I recently was at the COP in Glasgow and spoke on a panel about women leaders there as well, and it's so inspiring to think about the fact that the face of the future of climate is women, and I think the face of the future for oceans is women. The Biden-Harris administration that I'm here to represent prioritizes gender equality and equity at the highest levels, as evidenced by our first ever national strategy on gender equity and equality that was released last October. As part of that, we are determined to promote women's and girls' leadership roles in our efforts throughout the government, but especially to promote healthy oceans. And we know, we know that if we do this, we will see wonderful results. From ocean plastic pollution to sustainable fisheries to ocean conservation, we know that women play a significant role in the health of our oceans, and they do it all over the world. Let's look at how. We can start with plastic pollution. According to the UN Environment Program, plastic waste accounts for 85% of total marine waste. And globally, women often dominate the workforce in this informal waste sector. In many countries, they make up over half the workers in this field. As waste collectors and junk shop owners, they are quietly creating the circular economy in their communities. And of course, women always clean up. <laughs> Thus, in so many parts of the world, women are the key to keeping plastic waste out of the ocean and reducing its discharge into the environment in general. Let's talk about fisheries. Women also play a significant role in the fisheries sector throughout the entire supply chain, and they often fill the majority of the behind-the-scenes jobs in the fishing sector. But women possess, possess critical knowledge about local fish stocks. They are the first to notice when ecosystem changes occur in traditional and artisanal fisheries. But too often, these contributions go unseen because Compared to their participation in the fishery sector, sector at large, women are severely underrepresented across government and corporate leadership positions. But there are some bright spots. At the community level, women are increasingly creating spaces for themselves. For example, in the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador, where local groups have crea created a women's fishing cooperative to improve their employment opportunities and to provide for local food security. And I've seen the same in Peru and Chile and all through the Americas and in the Pacific as well. So those are just two examples, but today we will learn about many, many more. And let's get to the bottom line. The bottom line is that empowering women is not just good to do for women and for girls. It's the smart thing to do. We know there is a strong correlation between women in leadership and environmental success. Countries with women leaders are much more likely to have tough environmental standards and to meet their ambitious climate commitments, much more so than those that don't. And we can see that impact looking around the room today. Events like this that bring us together they inspire women and girls to continue to move and do the important work in this critical area. I hope that we will do even more to harness the power of women's contributions to healthy oceans, and we have many more conferences to look forward to this year to continue this conversation, and I look forward to that. We have this One Ocean Conference. We have an ocean plastic agreement negotiation, which will be also uh, critical and be led often by women. We have the Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction negotiation led by a woman. We have an Our Ocean Conference in Palau. We have the UN Ocean Conference. We have the UN General Assembly, and we have COP27. All opportunities for women to step forward and lead. So I say to you, if not now, 
when. Let's seize this moment. Thank you very much for having me, and I look forward to hearing the panel. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Secrétaire d'État. Thank you very much, Secretary of State. It was an honor to have you open the, this forum. Donc, Madame la Ministre, Minister, Madame la Secrétaire d'État, Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good morning. Je suis Marine My name is Marine Weltiné, President of Vista France. And it is an honor for me and a great pleasure to, for me to co-preside this forum with Rim Benzina, called Women, Voices of the Ocean, and I will also be moderating. Before, above all, I would like to applaud the initiative of the President of the Republic for holding this international summit on the oceans. And I would like to thank the Ambassador Olivier Poirot d'Arvor, who made this possible with his team. Before I introduce the agenda for the forum, a few words about Vista France that I run. It is an association of women that hold positions of responsibility in the maritime, French maritime sector. Created in 2004, the association has 150 members in Paris and in all of the major port towns. The purpose is to bring together women, promote their roles, contribute to the, the attractiveness of the sector with young girls and be a tool for personal and professional development. Vista France is part of the biggest professional women's network in the maritime sector, Vista International, present in 54 countries and bringing together 4,000 women. And I will welcome in a few moments the president of this association, Vista International. Now let's talk about the purposes and the targets for this forum. We are trying to show that women can legitimately access positions of responsibility in a sector that is still in majority male, they are, that they are committed to protecting oceans and biodiversity, as well as uh, working in uh, sustainable development in maritime activities. And the other purpose of this forum is to link objectives of the of sustainable development of the, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, 5 and 14, by showing the importance of gender mixity to show that women and men together, together can protect the oceans, our common uh, our common oceans. Through this forum, I wanted to highlight 14 and show 14 inspiring women. They all come from uh, different continents and different walks of life. And I would like to thank these women very warmly for being present here, either in the room with us or remotely online. They represent all of them, the voices of the ocean in its different shapes and sizes. Now, this forum will be held in five parts, the introduction. Then I'll give the floor to Mrs. Benzina, and then I will introduce the first sequence called Women Protectors of the Oceans, two scientists committed to protecting the oceans, and they will speak to you. Then the second Swiss session, uh, conquering women, and then I will ask three women who represent the maritime port uh, and fisheries activities committed to sustainable and responsible development. This sequence will then follow, be followed by a skipper who is a major conqueror of the oceans, Anne Gaison. In the third sequence, called Women, Futures, Future of the Oceans, we'll see how research and gender mixity is essential in a sector that's mainly male, and we'll call younger people and mainly younger women to commit to uh, working in areas linked to the seas. And to finish this session, we'll watch a video with the message from various women committed to protecting the oceans. Then I will give the floor to Mrs. Annick Girardin, the Minister for the Seas, who has, a gr has, great, has given us the great honor of being here. And then I'll uh, close the forum with a call for action. Without further ado, I would like to call the co president of this uh, forum, Rin Benzina, and she will begin our uh, introductory sequence. Rim is Tunisian by nationality. She is passionate by the, uh, with the, she's passionate by the seas. She's created the season, Blue Seasons. She's also uh, director of the World Forum of Bizet with uh, Pascal Amour as president. Rim, you have the floor. Merci. 
Merci. Thank you. Mrs. Yannick Girarda, Minister for the Seas, Mr. Mukimnika Medina, Secretary General, Your Excellency, Mr. the Ambassador Olivier Poivre d'Arvor, Mrs. Marine Oloyle Dimedian, President of East of France, ladies and gentlemen, VIPs, dear participants, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored today to take the floor during the Women Voices of the Ocean Forum. It is a true um, happiness for me to discover in such good company all these powerful women and discover this city of Brest with you, a major maritime city that um, faces the Atlantic Ocean. I come from elsewhere, from another Mediterranean or maritime area, from another coastline, but not from another world, because the ocean is one, our ocean is our common asset. The Mediterranean, however, had started its history very well. Tunisia, my country, was founded by a woman, a woman from the sea, a audacious navigator, the Queen of Aidan. The Queen of Aidan, princess, a Phoenician princess, left her country to avoid a civil war, and she took to the sea on a long voyage that led her to the southern parts of the Mediterranean towards fertile lands. Landing on the coastline of the current Tunisia, Didan found a place to found her capital city, and that was the great Carthage. And we, the Tunisians, we do not fear the sea, nor the tempests, nor men, or the or long sea voyages. Men or women from the south or the north, we aspire, all of us, to a better world, sustainable, fair, viable, and we share the same blue planet that we need to protect without, protect without failing. Economic players, uh, political leaders, scientists, and civil society all together to raise the challenges and that these 70 point 8% of the uh, globe actually have to face. Our meeting today is important in this respect because today the purpose of it is to strengthen our common commitment to preserve and operate in a sustainable way oceans, seas, and marine resources whilst being the putting, uh, concentrating on, and that's the second challenge, of the essential equality between genders. Even a few years ago, this was mainly uh, reserved to men of the sea. If our ocean is the same, if we share the same Mediterranean, um, whether you be Moroccan, Algerian, Tunisian, or Egyptian, that, um, that, that women in France, Spain, or Italy, or Greece share, if we are subject on our coast to the same pressures, the effects of climate change, the loss of biodiversity, the illegal fishing and overfishing, pollution of all shapes and sizes, economic um, extended uh, you, um, exploitation. We do not have the same uh, um, cards in our hands to uh, uh, push this all back and deal with it. The Mediterranean Sea that I come from is a good illustration of this. One of the seas the most polluted in the world. It represents less than 1% of the surface of the oceans, but it is one of the major reservoirs of marine and coast biodiversity on the planet, with over 17,000 species that are um, indigenous to, the, and 40% of these are under threat. Without solidarity, true solidarity between our two coastlines, we will not be able to do anything that is essential. If we are talking about building a sustainable world, how can we do this without an increased presence of women in the maritime sector, without um, gender equality? According to the IMO, women are the most underrepresented in the maritime sector and in the different activities. It only They only represent 2% of the 1.2 million um, people employed in the well, in the uh, fisheries world, whereas 94% of them work in the sector of cruise um, shipping. So it's important to highlight now the role of women at sea, whether they be navigators, or explorers, researchers, scientists, mar uh, um, belong to the marine world, uh, fishery, fishers, or people who work in the sustainable uh, development 
environment. Without them, we cannot have life or progress. Our first president of Tunisia, of the Republic of Tunisia, had said through women, communities, companies, states can aspire to a better future and to a better socio-economic growth. And I believe in this. A personal word just to finish my presentation. A few years ago, quite surprised by the implacable destruction of our coastlines, we decided with Mehdi Bihaj, who is here, to commit altogether. We created the Blue Season, a structure that aims at supporting and financing projects and initiatives to, uh, for local communities and associations, and this in favor of protecting our coastlines. And then five years ago, and you've just reminded us of this, with Pascal Lamy, we set up the World Forum for the Visage Sea, a forum which is now the main uh, meeting for the sea on the African continent and on uh, challenges linked to the seas. So I'm calling you now to join us today, today to supporting us, to cons take us into consideration uh, women from Africa, uh, young, the uh, remains of um, the Princess of Aladan and the Great and Carthage. Thank you very much. Merci, Rim. C'était euh, des mots très chaleureux et euh, ça nous fait vraiment, je sens, il y a une émotion dans la salle. Donc merci infiniment. Thank you very much, Rim. Those words were very warming and thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. She comes from a Cypriot family. She's president of Vista International and board member of various organizations like the Cyprus Shipping Chamber. She's Joint Chief Executive Officer of Tototeo Maritime. Despina has been selected in the lowest list as one of the top 100 most influential people in shipping for five consecutive years since 2017. Despina, you have the floor. Good morning, thank you so much, my dear friend Marie Noya. Dear Excellencies, as esteemed participants, bonjour à tous. Thank you for inviting WISTA to take part um, in this uh, forum. Thank you for allowing the voices of diversity and equality to be part of the sustainability discussion over these three days. And I hope that we can work together in ensuring that the diverse voices of the ocean can become a driving force for a sustainable future. But while we can say how much we wish for uh, diversity and equality within the ocean industries to be part of the discussion with tangible developments that benefit society, industry, and individuals, I feel that sometimes the talk is easy, but the actions are hard. For those who are not aware of WISTA, um, although Marie Noel has, uh, has uh, presented it earlier, uh, this is an association working at a local, national level, like in France and 54 other countries worldwide. And at an international level, we engage with other uh, bodies to help encourage and support all efforts that meet our goals. Through this network and our collaborations, notably with the International Maritime Organization, we have been able to scope out just how diverse shipping is or isn't. We have at the IMO what is known as consultative status. This means we contribute to the discussions on policy and regulation developments. It is not only about the need for diversity, which is still an important issue. It is about demonstrating how diversity can strengthen decision making. In this case, we're in a position to be a channel for female experts in environmental, safety, trade, and other policy issues to be heard. Women have a crucial role in sustainable development, both in developed and developing regions. Diversity is an essential element of sustainability. It is not about saying it would be nice to have it. It is about recognizing the need for it. The status quo has led us to where we are today. And when it comes to governments and commercial factors, the focus has been rightly so 
dominated by GDP and competitive growth. However, women coming into the industry and public institutions not only think out of the box to help tackle these and other issues, but they find it necessary to do so. Furthermore, discussions on diversity need to be inclusive. We cannot just talk amongst ourselves and think that this means that we are engaged and positive in our engagement. We need to include everyone in these discussions and the only enemies in this are in action and time. The results of a survey conducted by the IMO and Wista International across the whole spectrum of shipping has just been completed to get a snapshot of, snapshot of the maritime sector. For the first time, possibly in history, we have gained broad and granular insight into the gender balance of the shipping industry, an industry that spans many different sectors, many different countries, and different types of roles, and of course, generations. The information, the data we have collected, is a concrete step from which we can now make more focused developments to create change, permanent, sustainable change. Let me give you some examples. Our survey with the IMO across the industry um, asked the companies to voluntarily submit information of the number of women they employ and their roles. We can see sectors with almost no women present and others where we can see some elements of parity and equal representation. The approach to building diversity in the former will be different from maintaining the ratios in the latter. But we now have the data to help us. Data is key. This is an important step in our ambition to develop holistic gender diversity. The maritime sector can see for itself which industries are pushing ahead with diversity and which are not. We can see how ship-owning companies, for example, and that was a revelation. We can see how ship-owning companies have a reasonably high level of women in senior management and board positions, but the bankering, offshore and dredging companies barely touch double percentage figures across their whole workforce. The survey also underscores previous findings from other organizations about the low number of women at sea. Very soon, the IMO and WISTA will release the full results of this report and they will be available to everyone uh, to use. What I want to push for is that this collection of industry data will fuel those who can make a change to do so. This is not big data. It is not something for algorithms. It is data with a real human touch. Hopefully, it will give men and women across different but interlocked sectors, subsectors, and geographical locations the inspiration to focus their efforts on creating uh, greater gender diversity. And that is what I ask of you. Look at how we can retain the positives we have achieved over the last few years as people in the industry realize the importance and the real benefits of diversity for society and industry. And look at how we can share experiences and work with and within those industries and regions that need a bit more support to achieve better goals. How do we change hearts and minds? This is not an easy task. It will not happen overnight. But that is no reason for not trying but to keep on trying, all of us, men and women, who understand until we succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Despina, for your words. And let's move on and give the floor to Françoise Gaille and Antier Polissus for the section on women protectors of the ocean. Françoise Gaille, U.S. scientist, vice president of the Ocean Climate Platform, head of research emeritus at the CNRS. You, are speciali you specialize in ecosystems, and you are going to talk about these in a few moments. And I had a question for you. What is the most important in terms of how it needs to be protected? And what's the main commitment that needs to be made after this forum for, by heads of state and government? Françoise. Good morning to everyone. And thank you for inviting me. 
uh, I am very proud because you said a lot of things about me and uh, well, it's a pleasure to hear that. Uh, I think that um, uh, for the ocean, uh, perhaps the, mo the most important thing we have to do is to understand what is the ocean, how the ocean is shaping the climate, the climate change, but how also it is the, the point, the origin of the life. If uh, you think about that, and the fact that, uh, for example, the life is not only at the surface of the ocean, but also in the deep sea. Well, you can imagine that uh, there is a long time ago, uh, the first ancestors were exploring the physical and chemical environment. And then after that, knowing well the ocean itself, they were able to go on the earth with the air. And so we are today the result of, of all this uh, story. And I think that protecting the ocean today is perhaps the most important thing for sustainable development of the earth. And we think also that uh, the woman may have a great role in participating in the discoveries of the life and of uh, all the process this ocean is uh, showing us. That's okay. Would you add something? Would you like to add something? Yes, I, I am very glad to be wi with Antje because I think uh, another point that the women are uh, knowing is that uh, uh, when I start on the friendship uh, at the beginning of my career, I was, uh, we were two women in France to, to have the, the privilege to, to do research in the deep sea. And uh, after that, I was invited by uh, the US uh, teams, Woodsoul and the Scripps, and uh, Woodsoul especially. And um, well, I discovered another way of life on the ship. And it was for me wonderful, you know, because well, when you discover that what you think, you find it outside France, but in the States, it was very important for me. And the second thing is that I was, at this time, at the middle point of my career, and I discovered young scientists like Antje. She was a PhD, and uh, well, we were sharing a lot of things, and I am very proud also to discover that after several years, uh, well, those young women are getting a position who is very important in the society. So, thank you also to be here, Antje. Merci beaucoup, Françoise, pour tes mots. Thank you very much, Françoise, for your kind words. Je dois dire que je suis très fière que tu sois là. I'm very happy that you are here with us, so once again, thank you. Donc je vais accueillir... I'm going to welcome Dr. Antique Boltius. It's an honor to have you with us. Antje, vous êtes Antje. German, you are director of the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research, of, and you are professor of geomicrobiology. She, you head the Bridge Group for Deep Sea Ecology and Technology at the Max Planck Institute for Marine Microbiology. <coughs> Boris and Antje, est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler de l'état des mers? Boris and Antje, could you talk about the state of the policies through the many expeditions, 50 expeditions that you've uh, carried out in the sea, which are very impressive? I give you the floor. I will speak in English, sorry, but. <laughs> I would like to take what Francois said first and say it's exactly that. 
our roles of uh, women that help other women to excel, to have the ambition, even though in many places, in many professions, we still represent minorities. So it was exactly my path as a young student that by chance maybe, but there were these heroine women researching the ocean and showing the network of life. And Francoise Guy, of course, was one of them, Miriam Tubier, as she mentioned. I read books like Rachel Carlson, who wrote, was one of the first women to write about the losses, the, the problems at stake if we do not fix the environment. And uh, there are so many other women, when you think about it, I was born into a time where it was the first time that women were allowed on boats, in Germany much later than in France, so I could go and see it is possible, there is no barrier I have because others pa have passed away. And so I asked on board um, some of the men, because in Germany it was said women are not good on board, they may, everyone will be confused, men cannot focus, not concentrate. And I asked on the French ship, so why is it so easy for you? Well, they said, okay, it was a big step when Francoise and Miriam and the others came and worked on board, but it was a good step encouraging diversity. And so diversity is so important for science because it's about creativity, it's about ideas, about ambition, and the more we are, and it's not only about two gender, it's about everyone, the more we are, the, the, the more diverse our background is, the better we can do science. And that plays a role in the discovery of life. So in our situation where we have not understood the riches of the oceans, where we do not know, we probably don't do know only 10% of our life on Earth. There are strange, wonderful creatures to uncover. At, but the science is slower than the change in the environment. What can we do? We can only work together to find that life, to give it a name, to show the diversity of life on Earth and to understand that we are all depending on it. So what we need to do, and my research, my institute stands for discovery in the polar oceans, everyone needs to give that life that we don't know a voice, a place. And this I find very important, and thank you Liz for starting the story with the fairy tale, our story. It is a story that goes beyond science, because the idea how different, how diverse the oceans is, is a story that is not only scientific, it is also very cultural, it combines humanity because we are all having traditions, cultures, fairy tales of exactly that, that we are part of a network of life and we just have to work so hard now to discover this and to give it a voice, give it a place and that's why I'm so glad I can be here and speak with you about this special charge that maybe especially women, mothers, have. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. Now, both of you, do you also have a message to address to young people and young women in yes, particular? I think that uh, young women have to come to s learn science. I think that the knowledge, uh, there are several knowledge, the science is one of them. But for the society and for the future, the knowledge, uh, we have uh, many uh, young women who are now able to bring new results, the creativity of, uh, and the way of thinking of this young woman. I think it's important for uh, promoting the sustainable development also state of the ocean and of the, our society and our planet. So yes, it's very important to have women in science. So come on with us. <laughs> Merci, Françoise. Thank you, Françoise. Yes, uh, I find you. it important because I remember exactly how it was to be a little girl and unsure about the future and then being allowed by my family and others to just try for the profession I wanted to, to take. Ocean Explorer was my idea as a kid and there was no one saying, oh, you can't do that. Um, and so that we all remember when kids, girls ask us, how can I have a future? What can I do? To just encourage ideas and to help a little. Francoise helped me a little because at the time where I took responsibility, she invited me being a guest professor in Paris 6 in her lab, 
that totally changed my approach um, to, to life and discussions because I learned different cultures of discussions, different ways of thinking. And so everyone here, everyone you know, could just adopt one or two little girls on their way to the future and help them. And then that would really change the world. And so I'm trying hard and I'm trying, as you said, not only for the scientific career, but also for the maritime businesses. There are girls who want to become sailors. Why not? There are girls who even want to be in the army, in the police to rescue, to go and report about wars, the most difficult things. There are girls who are working in hospitals with people dying and hard jobs are as needed, as available for women as for men and we can just help the kids going on their path. Merci beaucoup. Merci thank you very much, Françoise. And thank you very much to Antia. We're going to now move à la prochaine séquence to the next sequence. Respecter les temps. Try to stick to the timetable. Um, I'm going to call for the Women Conquerors session, representatives from various maritime activities, port activities, all committed to sustainable development. I'm calling Lauren Yamba, French. She's a graduate from international, in international law and European law. In the, uh, she was a legal advisor in the Maritime Affairs Division at the Ministry for the Environment for five years. And since 2017, she's in charge of institutional and legal affairs uh, with Armateur de France, the French shipbuilders and transport, ship, maritime transport um, professionals. Lauren, you have the floor. Thank you, Marie Noël. Hi, everyone. For a long time, you imagine the women in the, in the business of shipping. There was a silhouette at the end of a, of a quay waiting for a man to come home at Christmas. But in, in that it was... Uh, and uh, these, this kind of cliché are, are behind us, far behind us, and the mentality has considerably changed for companies in transport and shipping in France that I represent today. What matters is to have, have the right human resources that are skilled, whether they've been men or women. Amongst the staff, there are women in management teams, there are women managers and officers. And uh, Captain, I'm attracted by that natural, huge, immense space with a power that's incredible. And that power, we use it to push the, bo the boat forward around the, around the planet, and that's pretty incredible too. But I'm also, I like competition. I've always liked to compete. And I like the fact that, you know, I'm doing races and I'm trying to win. Thank you very much. Action, competition, those are good qualities and that you want to hand over to the younger people. So thank you for that. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you indeed. I've just been told that there's a big internet break, so I'm not sure we're going to succeed in having our two uh, remote people. One. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, good, wonderful. So we're going to pick up again. Lyon Kwa, who is with us. Thank you for being with us, Lyon. She's from Singapore. She joined the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore as Chief Executive since 2018. She's a board member of various organizations like Singapore Chamber of Maritime Arbitration, Singapore Maritime Foundation, Global Centre for Maritime, De uh, Singapore Maritime Institute, Global Centre for Maritime Decarbonization, Decarbonization. And she graduated with an MBA from EMD Business School in Switzerland and has a master's in economics from the French University of Pantheon Sorbonne. Li Yun, could you explain us the main challenges facing the Maritime Port Authority? Bonjour, and bonjour Marie Noël and uh, everybody um, in the conference. Uh, really very inspiring to hear from previous speakers about the roles that they are playing in the maritime field. Um, the oceans make up 70% of the world surface area, so fully agree of the conference that we must collectively protect it. On your question on the challenges that MPA face, uh, maybe let me briefly talk about the port of Singapore. 
We are situated along the Straits of Malacca and Singapore, where one third of global trade flows through. So we are a major transshipment hub where more than 80% of the containers, when they come through our port, they go directly to other ports. And we are also one of the largest bunkering hub refueling the vessels. So the challenges that MPA face is global in nature. And I would like to lay out three key challenges that I see um, within the maritime industry. The first is on disruption. So while the industry remains resilient during COVID, it is not without disruption. And we've heard about the global change uh, disruption that's been taking place. So we need to be more COVID resilient when it comes to issues such as crew change and putting seafarers' interests at the forefront. And we need to be able to conduct contactless operations to safeguard ourselves against future pandemic. The second challenge is really about digitalization. How do we harness the full force of technology to layer physical connectivity with digital connectivity that can help us resolve all the global supply chain issues? And the key is to help as much and as, as many maritime companies go digital as possible. In Singapore, what we are doing to try to tackle on this global challenge is to operationalize as much as possible using digital platform such as digital port at SG so that vessels can enjoy berthing on arrival and we improve the turnaround time at port to improve the efficiency. Third, and I'll speak more about it, is on decarbonization, sustainability, a topic that's close to everyone's heart now. Now, this is a challenge that requires global and multi-coordinated approach because shipping is, after all, an international business. So we need to bring all the players along the value chain to come together to give it a push. So this is one of our priority, one of the challenge. We are working very closely with all different stakeholders to push and find a solution for the shipping sector. The first, I'll mention four initiatives. The first is really having an inclusive agenda, ensure that information that is being um, thought through has, can be shared with other players. So for example, through the International Maritime Organization and Singapore, we recently launched this platform called NextGen, Green and Efficient Navigation Ecosystem Platform, so that we can share information um, to the general public, to the member states and to the industry players and we'll be launching this next phase at the upcoming Singapore Maritime Week this April. The second initiative it really is about partnership with the industry. How do we work with the industry to come up with solutions? And with that, we set up an international advisory panel who's come up with recommendations in terms of policies and actions. The third initiative really is about setting up a global center for decarbonization. It is about, it's set, it's set up uh, with uh, six other key private layers, shipping companies involved, so that we can help to support research and development, conduct trials on the future of shipping, how do we test international shipping and ensure that the alternative energy solutions for bunkering and international shipping exist. So as at end December 2021, we already have received 31 expression of interest from the various industry players to take part in this initiative. The fourth track is really about launching a blueprint that is, will last us until 2050 on both domestic emissions, our ports, as well as international shipping. And one of the elements will be about talent. We've talked a lot about women in this conference. How do we prepare our talent for future digitalization and future energy skills that is required by the industry? So a lot more work needs to be done um, from MPA and Singapore. We take this challenge just very seriously. And it's important that we work together with, as an ecosystem with different players so that we can move forward on this global solution. What's the type of fuel? What's the future ship we need? What's the future skills as needed? How do we equip our existing talent with the skills so that we can manage the transition to future? So with that, I would like to thank um, the organizer once again for inviting me and merci beaucoup Marie-Noël. Merci beaucoup, Li Yun. C'est un grand honneur aussi de, de vous compter parmi nous et merci encore pour votre intervention. Alors, sans plus attendre, est-ce que alors, je vais passer la parole ado, Nous avons Margaret, Nag Margaret Nagato, qui est aussi en ligne, pour présenter. Je voulais 
I wanted to also place in this sequence to show the importance uh, in the sea of another activity, that of fishing for men and women. Margaret Nakato Katozi. She's from Uganda. She's coordinator of Katozi Women Development Trust and executive director of World Forum of Fish Harvesters and Fish Workers. She holds a Bachelor of Degree in Development Studies from University of South Africa and Master of Science in Development Management from Open University in UK. Margaret, it's a pleasure. I give you the floor. Happy to bring. For millions of and men, and is a key of neutral and protect. According to the Illuminating the Hidden Harvest study, 50% of fish workers worldwide are women, 90% of the is to connect. So 50% um, of the fish workers worldwide are women, and 90% of these are in developing countries, and they perform up to 90% of the roles in fisheries. Therefore, it is important that fisheries and women are included in the discussion on the ocean. Cohen and others in securing a just space for small-scale fisheries in the blue economy highlighted that the largest group of ocean users, including me, the women and men from the small-scale fisheries, argue that they have been marginalized from the dialogues that determine strategies for the future of the ocean. More so, Food security and human rights are missing from these discussions. Such inequalities can negatively impact the access and allocation of resources, and they perpetuate insecure territorial and tenure rights, which are real threats to small-scale fisheries, in which majority of the women work globally. The ocean space is becoming increasingly crowded as high seas and deep sea flow continue to attract the attention of large industries. The resulting decline in the status of the ocean healthy, the marine ecosystem and marine life has become increasingly clear in recent years, negatively impacting ocean-based economies especially coastal communities dependent upon marine resources for livelihood and food security. Equity is critical to creating a sustainable ocean economy with a focus on how the benefits from the ocean are distributed among the various stakeholders, especially small-scale fishing communities and women. This will require collaborative approaches balancing competitive interest to realize economic potential while mitigating irreversible environment change. The voice, the voices, uh, the interests of the group of ocean users, small scale fishers, and the growing social movement of diverse actors like WISTA, like the WFF, which I belong, and our fishnet, which is a women, our continental organization, should be recognized as legitimate representatives to dialogues on ocean agenda to bring about 
social justice agenda. Women and small-scale fishers are the primary rights holders to whom ocean governance must be accountable. The transformation of ocean governance must ensure that human rights of those who depend on the ocean for their livelihoods are respected and the benefits of growth are equitably distributed. An opportunity to secure small-scale fisheries was presented with the development of the voluntary guidelines for securing sustainable small-scale fisheries in the context of food security and poverty eradication. Endorsed by the Committee of Fisheries of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in 2014, the guidelines propose principles that are sensitive to food security human rights and promote empowerment and inclusive decision making implementing the ssf guidelines by states and non-state actors including all sectors is a substantial step forward ensuring that small scale fisher issues and perspectives are addressed in the governance of the oceans more so, the profile of small-scale fisheries has been raised through the dedicated target within the UN SDGs. SDG 14 calls for provision of marine resources and markets to small-scale artisanal fishers. And the main indicator defined by the UN to monitor the implementation of SDG 14b is the progress achievement by countries in applying legal, regulatory, policy, institution framework, which recognize and protect access rights for small-scale fisheries, including women. Finally, the United Nations General Assembly has declared 2022 the International Year of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture. This is a timely reminder for states and non-state actors to support the implementation of the SSF guidelines as they are abbreviated to ensure that artisanal fisheries, mainly women, can sustainably contribute to the EFA vision, a world in which small-scale artisanal fishers, farmers, fish workers are fully recognized and empowered and continue their contribution to human well-being, healthy food system, poverty eradication through the responsible and sustainable use of fisheries and aquaculture. Margaret. How interrelated activities on the ocean are demand new approaches of cooperation based on the idea that the ocean belongs to everybody. Margaret. The need to identify and manage trade-off is urgent. Traditionally isolated sectoral management arrangement, such as shipping, Fishing, seabed mining, cable line must all Margaret, be mindful Margaret, of the global. Margaret, désolé, je vais être obligé de vous couper parce que nous, nous sommes en. Uh, Margaret, I really apologize. We're going to have to um, stop now um, because we're really late. Do you have a few words to conclude, please? Thank you. Just two few words to conclude. Yes. Sustainable production and ensuring that vulnerable communities, particularly small-scale fishers and women who disproportionately bear the large share of the burden of negative impacts of the oceans must be protected. We have one ocean. We need a new relationship with the ocean that will contribute to sustaining the health of the ocean. Advanced humanity, human well-being is intertwined with the health of the oceans. That has to be kept in our mind. Thank you very much for having me. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. And we're going to move on to the third session, session women and the future of the oceans. Young ladies, we notice, uh, prefer to study li life sciences, research, or jobs linked to activities and services. But the future of the ocean will require talents and extended skills. Why is it so important to seek gender equality in 
teams that work on this subject, and I've asked three speakers to talk about this. Delphine Oro is joining us online. I've asked her to, you are Ambassador, Secretary General of the Generation Equality Forum. You are a graduate from the uh, Higher Education Kennedy Institute. You, in 2019, French American and we're very impressed by your background and achievements and you can explain to us why it's so important to obtain gender equality in these teams and why you defend women's rights. Delphine, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm going to speak in English. The One Ocean Summit and WISTA for inviting me to this conference. Um, I am very honored. I am probably uh, the only one uh, in this uh, panel who's not an ocean expert, uh, but I am a gender equality expert and I would like to uh, link the issue of gender equality and the ocean sector. A uh, few words of introduction. As you have stated, I am the Secretary General of the Generation Equality Forum and the French Ambassador for Women's Rights. Um, the Generation Equality Forum is the largest feminist women's rights international conference of the past 25 years. It took place last year in Paris and in Mexico. It was organized by the United Nations, UN Women, and co-hosted by the governments of France and Mexico. Its aim was to give a new momentum, a new impulse for gender equality and women's rights around the world. Now, very interestingly, in the Generation Equality Forum, we put on uh, six action coalitions uh, which goal was to promote women's rights and mobilize new funding to promote gender equality. One of, the, one of these action coalitions was focusing on the intersection between gender equality and the fight for climate change. Now, I have to say, we didn't have a specific focus on the place and the role of women and gender equality in the ocean and maritime sector. But I'm looking at some of the figures and I'm struck by how these figures in the ocean and maritime sector actually reflect the reality of gender equality across the board in all economic sectors. Women represent nearly half of the 180 million people worldwide working in fisheries and aquaculture, yet they are many of them, most of them, in low-skilled, low-paid jobs with a contract health and safety. Their contribution to the ocean conservation, to ocean-based livelihoods like fishing, uh, everything that has been said before me, uh, is major, but it's still very invisible. And the reason for that is that women are still kept in the underrepresented, under-visible jobs, and they're not at the decision-making table, uh, whether in the private sector, in the international organizations, uh, or in the governments when it comes to the maritime and the ocean sector. Uh, moreover, um, I found that women represent only 38% of ocean scientists all over the world, and there's still very little data and research on these issues. Very interestingly, this resonates with the work that we have been doing with the United Nations and the French government for the Generation Equality Forum in the context of our coalition focusing on the intersection between gender equality and climate change. Yes, women are the first victims today of climate change, of drought, of deforestation, of environmental disaster. They are uh, the majority of farmers exploiting resources from the land across the world. They represent 75% of farmers, yet they represent only 15% of landowners globally. So what can we do about this? How can we change the role of women, especially then when we know that they're much more sensitive to the issue of climate change, of ocean protection, of fighting against pollution? They're really the frontline actors of resilient agriculture, of um, environmental Delphine. protection, ocean protection, Delphine. and so on. Del Delphine, excusez-moi, on, on me fait signe. Delphine, I really apologize for tell, telling me that we have to make it a little shorter because we really are late. If you could move towards the conclusion of your presentation, that would be okay, fantastic. So Thank you very much. Is two lines of action. One is to increase the proportion of women in decision making and leadership, leadership position and especially also in international negotiations. I'm thinking about the UN negotiations on the high seas. It's very important to have more women. 
to increase the percentage of global, global climate finance flows, public and private, towards gender-just climate solutions. Three, uh, increase the number of uh, women, female students, enrolled in educational fields related to climate change and oceans. And fourth, um, uh, increase the representation of women and girls in advancing climate justice across all levels and sectors, at the local uh, level, at the regional level, at the national level, and at the international level. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Delphine. Désolé pour cette coupe. Thank you very much, Delphine, and we really apologize for uh, making it just a short presentation. Thank you for being with us, though. Now, before we move along, um, for the last session, Sabine Route Bézieux, the president of the Foundation of the Sea, founded by her in 2015. She was chosen as Personality of the Year by Vista International in 2021. Sabine, you have the floor. Thank you, Mary Noel. To continue in English for our international guests uh, here today. To explain how women are the future, future of the ocean, let me talk about a house. Not a house like a housewife. A house in ancient Greek language is oikos. This nice sounding word has given us two words we use almost every day. Oikonomos and oikologos. In other words, economy and ecology. Both words refer to the, to the idea of a house. Economy was initially about managing a home's budget, then expanded to be applied to a city, a nation, and today to all financial interactions between individuals or organizations. You know, today's global economy is irrigated by the ocean. 85% of trade travels in the ocean. 98% of global communications utilize underwater cables. Ecology refers to the laws of nature, the way our planet is so admirably organized with ecosystems like the ocean that we human are trying to understand through science. Economy and ecology are blue. They refer to our common house, our blue planet. For centuries and millenniums, women have been considered as the keepers of that oikos, that home. This may be condescending and may be restrictive to the role of women, but, uh, but think how it also gives us women the most important role. Unite these two words that are often seen as opposed, even irreconcilable. Wista International, uh, Marie Noël, the global organization you, you chair in France, with 4,000 women in 54 countries, have elected me Personality of the Year 2021. This recognition says a lot about how women are indeed paving the way to reconcile business and the environment. I chair the Fondation de la Mer, an institution created in 2015 with that very objective federate all those who act towards a free, protected, and sustainable ocean. Over the last seven years, we have indeed succeeded to gather hundreds of local NGOs, as well as hundreds of companies, thousands of volunteers. Today, more and more companies are trying to identify their impact on the ocean and take the indispensable measures to reduce it. Some pioneer companies are using the ocean framework developed with the, the Ministry of the Sea, and applying to the Ocean Approved Label. These are the only tools available today to link the SDG 14 on the ocean and corporate businesses. Yesterday, Accor, the leading hospitality group in the world, and Ponant, the uh, shipping company, the cruise shipping company, announced they were embarking on that Ocean Approved journey. I wish today every company would now take that route and make their own journey to look at their operations and reduce their impact, their blueprint, blue footprint, and reconcile in their own businesses, economy and ecology. Women are also key in education. 70% of the teachers in the world are female. They enjoy sharing knowledge with the youth. In some countries, ocean literacy is a growing part of the national curricula. 
Fondation La Mer has dedicated significant efforts towards education, working with the National Ministry of Education. And last year, over 100,000 young people had the opportunity to access one of our programs. Fondation La Mer is also active in a number of French-speaking countries. Early education is key, obviously, but it's also vital to encourage higher education, young scientists. With its scientific council, chaired by Mrs. Françoise Guy, Fondation de la Mer allocates awards to PhD students in French-speaking countries. They can come from all disciplines, ranging from biology to technology and from law to a history. The good news is there's a quasi-equivalence of young girls and boys among the candidates. According to BIMCO, women represent only 1.2% of the global seafarer workforce. And you know what? At the same time, the maritime industry is actively hiring around the planet. Maybe those people have not realized that hiring among only half the world population does not help. Women are the future of the sea. Some argue that jobs in the maritime industry are too difficult for women. Maybe, or maybe they are difficult for men too. And no one has considered that alleviating the hardships of a job may increase its attractiveness and help recruit men and women. Another way to formulate this, and this is a strong personal conviction, making a position physically accessible to a woman will render that job more appealing to everyone. Why should one feel too cold or too wet or suffer from shoulder or back ache? This leads me to my final point and back to another word. No ancient Greek this time, but a word from my mother tongue, French. The word for mother and the word for sea sound exactly the same in French, mère. It's interesting, isn't it? It's a coincidence, but because they do not share the same etymology, I see a symbolic dimension in this homonymy. The sea is the source of life, where life came from some three or four billion years ago. No need to explain how a mother is also a source of life. The sea provides, provides water and food. It's generous and nourishing. Maybe because of this experience of women, we are uniquely positioned to lead the one and only challenge for this century, reconcile economy and ecology. Thank you. Marie-Sophie Pavlak, Marie Pavlak now is going to take the floor and then we'll take the to give the floor to the minister, Annick Girardin. You are president and founder of the, an association that you're going to talk about, and you have the floor. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to speed up because I've heard that we are delayed. Or late. I'll take my mask off as well. I'm very honored, very happy to take the floor in front of you today, despite the fact that it's difficult after all of these wonderful, inspiring, committed women that I admire and that I would like to thank. As our dear Marie Noel said, I'm president of the Alg Bouge Association, uh, so it's there to help to bring more women into the National Navy. I'm very proud of this, and it's moving forward very nicely. This association that I set up in 2005 was to respond to a need at the time of people in industry to have more women in their technical and scientific teams, and this in all of the areas lacking women, and of course, especially or the maritime sector is part of this, and all of the maritime sectors were uh, mainly male, for some of them, or in a majority male. Thanks to our 8,000 um, godmothers, we have meetings every year to inform over many, many young women every year. So why in 2022 do we still need associations such as ours? Why do we need to do all of this, whereas the sea and oceans are very attractive, it seems, because the story of gender equality in the maritime sector is very recent, very young. We are talking about social and society challenges where stereotypes and 
uh, sub yes. preconceived ideas still persist. To break these stereotypes and to change people's way of thinking takes time. To give you a small idea of the time scale, I'll move back to 1802, where we had the first lycée and school, high school for boys in France. And 1876 was when we talked about in the National Assembly of the schooling of girls and the creation of the first girls' school or high school, where morality and philosophy, art and culture were encouraged to be taught to the detriment of maths and physics that were not actually taught in these high school in this high school. So at that time, it was a major leap ahead by authorizing and allowing young girls to go to high schools, but we put it in people's minds that sciences and technology were not women's subjects. In 1824, uh, the, um, the uh, lycée uh, end of school um, um, exam was the same as the boys. Uh, then things accelerated greatly, and I will accelerate my speech, Marinelle, don't worry. Today we're very happy to have a dedicated session to talk about moving things forward. Now, on the maritime side, what is happening? I'm just going to quote one women, woman, Jeanne Barré. Jeanne Barré. She was born in 1740, and she is a woman who became a botanist and who was, went on the Bougainville expedition with her companion, who was a naturalist. She dressed up as a man and pretended to be a man throughout the whole expedition around the world. She was the first woman to uh, go on an expedition around the world, and she has become the flag bearer for uh, mixity in the uh, Navy, uh, the French Navy. That's thanks to uh, this that we know her. But actually, the pioneering or trailblazers of the, of the seas are in this room. This room. They're more contemporary to us. And it's just to tell you that gender equality uh, and history of gender equality is quite a recent occurrence. Now, of course, there are all of these women that we listened um, about and to. Uh, there are role models. There are hundreds of them today. They have knowledge, know-how, and experience that's fantastic. But you, they, this needs to be talked about, which is often the problem we have with women, be between knowledge and getting it to be known, and getting it to be known to encourage young people, to get them to move into the adventure of working in the oceans and in the many areas that make up um, the um, activities around the oceans. Now, it's the 10th of Feb 10th February before uh, the International Day for Women and uh, young, wi young Women in, San in the Sciences. And so we've set off a small uh, poll online. What, is, uh, what, what does it mean, a young woman or a woman uh, working in uh, scientific activities? And then we've sent this out to people to get people to answer it on social networks and tell us what they think about it. We, over, we received over 200 responses that were um, will be published tomorrow. I'm just going to read one of them, and this is one I, that attracted or drew my attention. It's interesting. It's a young girl with stars in her eyes, loads of ideas, an athlete who jumps over obstacles, who jumps over hurdles like a relay uh, race to transmit her knowledge to the future generations. And I'm coming back to the subject of handing down knowledge and transferring it. This is a subject that's an in-depth, interesting, important subject. And it's really to tell you that this is what we can do, all of us, all of the women and men in this room, and uh, including companies also. We, it is our duty to transfer to the younger generation the desire to actually move into these areas. We need to deconstruct these un conscious stereotypes in people's minds, and we need to be able to act as role models, models on all levels and highlight this. This requires commitment to explain, inform, and enthrall, and show that through proof that it's possible and be able to say, I have done this. So to open up the field of possibles to fight uh, preconceived ideas, I'd like to attract your attention to a handsome moment to do this with the maritime French Maritime Cluster and uh, with our association over the past few years, we've Organized, we organized the wings of the ocean, Les Ailes de l'Océan. Françoise Gall had taken part in the first um, event of this type. It's on the 8th of June next, during the World Day of for Oceans, and you can all come and take part. Please don't hesitate. Join us. Seas and oceans need us all, women and men. Let's be there on board and ensure that this strengthens our motivation and all of the life forces and powers in play to do this. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marie Noël, for this fantastic sequence. Thank you. Session. Thank you, Marie-Sophie, very much. 
Now, we have time to show you this video. We wanted to, it's Wonders of the Sea. And thank you to Catherine Chabot, who is a patron of for this video. It's a fantastically beautiful video funded by the Catherine Chabot, European MP, who's here in the room, and I would like to thank her for this. We have one planet, a common ocean, and four billion women who can contribute to protect it. More engaged women means new hopes, new ideas, more ends to defend our seas. Let's save our ocean and our future. Voilà. Merci. Merci à Amélie Conti pour la Thank you to Amélie Conti. She's the one who um, made this video. We're very proud to have to taken part in this. And without further ado, I would like to ask Mrs. Girardin to come and take the floor. Minister, we're very proud to have you with us. Thank you very much. And it's very complex to take the floor after these fantastic pictures of committed women and for oceans, the oceans that we're here all together to talk about and protect it. Now, President of Wista International, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Chair of Wista France, Marie Noël, uh, Madam Director of the World Forum of the Sea, Sherim, and obviously all of you here present, ladies and gentlemen, uh, representing the world of the sea as an ambassador, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, lovers of the sea, thank you for inviting me to participate in this exchange. And it's an honor to be closing this. I think that the topic, uh, we can't use the word close on this topic. For me, it's an international event devoted to uh, d talking about the value of women in the sea. Um, in an area that's too masculine. I'm talking as a minister of the sea, but as a, a daughter of a, of, a, of, a, of a fisherman. And I come from a, a, a whole clan in the North Atlantic of fishermen where the role of women f was for a long time linked to the work and love of the sea. I'd like to uh, pay tribute to Marim Menzemik, who talked about her commitment for the development of uh, maritime activities in the Mediterranean Basin. We've met already. Uh, and, and also, I'd like to salute Margaret Nakato that we saw on screen. It was the executive director of the World, the World Forum of uh, Fishers and Workers. And I listened earlier, before I came in, I listened to what she was saying. I'd like to thank her again for her commitment in, uh, in working on human rights and the full realization of those rights in the case of food safety, it's always very precious in our organization. I would, in my turn, to add to what was said this morning by citing two examples of women. I'll only talk about two, but uh, uh, which is done, congratulations for what she represented. I'd just like to say that it's in her honor that I decided to name Jean Barré the future uh, uh, patrouilleur of, of maritime affairs. Another exceptional woman, in, 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 an oceanographer. She was the first woman aboard, uh, officially aboard a scientific vessel. She devoted her life to observing the work of, of uh, sailors in, in the submarine spaces. And she was an ecologist before the term existed. She was one of the first uh, whistleblower about over-exploitation of species. By her commitment and her investment in the field, 
which uh, uh, in her very long sessions on the sea, and I recall her extraordinary pictures when she uh, was on a fishing vessel who was in, the, in Nova Scotia uh, fishing for a cod. Is there really a model a woman uh, working towards a more sustainable ocean? So in, in addition to these two testimonies, building the future of the ocean cannot happen without women without their particular way of seeing things, without their experience, uh, which is complementary to that of men. Uh, there's no point in opposing people uh, by constraint or any other means. There's an important amount of work to be done uh, that we cannot give up on, and we can't deprive ourselves of half of humanity. So navigation has always been uh, closed to women due to perhaps uh, the fact that it was far away or the working conditions were, ha were hard on board. And um, they led the hard life, you said, uh, Lauren. And there's also superstition, a woman on board. That was superstitious. And it was kind of complicated to fight against all that. But given so the progress that has been done is enormous, there's even more to be, that remains to be done. But I'm happy to see that how dynamic this activity, this action is uh, expressed here today. And I'm congratulating the ISTAT, uh, ISTAT International to have put together a network of women working in the sea in many different areas. In more than 50 countries, we have members. We need to have more visibility uh, to your commitment and our commitment. So we cannot uh, forget the, all that needs to be done. And there are several societal issues. First of all, uh, 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 social uh, and, uh, fairness in, in hiring and uh, fairness, fairness in career paths, uh, equality in pay, and uh, um, harassment. These are many, uh, uh, some of the many areas that we need to take care of. The government is economically responsible. They need to continue uh, to work on feminization of these areas that are really a problem in development of these areas because uh, mixity is important. Uh, the, the call for action is, resonates with the combat I've already supported as a minister and as a woman as well. I've carried forward the colors of sustainable development in the COP21 in Paris or in the definition of the 17 objectives of sustainable development of the UN. At the time, I was Secretary of State for Development and Fran Francophonie. The One Ocean Summit uh, is, one, is a step to reaching uh, these objectives. But it, it, there's another objective, it is equality between sexes. It's the necessary cement without which we cannot, uh, we, we cannot do without to build a better and more sustainable world. These 17 objectives for sustainable development need to be taken as a global thing. And that's what comes out of the colloquium on employment as well and skills that was just held in the framework of the PFU, the French presidency, under my initiatives where we grouped together uh, young men and young women uh, six young ambassadors who expressed um, themselves very strongly on this. There were more than 300 people that participated in this colloquium. And the only effective method, and this is to prove by example, the, the, the ambassadors that you, there's no getting around um, by their involvement and, in, in associations or in networks. A lot of your daily action you've committed to in the service of ecology, in industry, the world of fishing, of education, and institutions, which some of which have been committed, uh, and obviously with the Foundation for the Sea. And I wish uh, once again to congratulate them for uh, you for your appointment. All men, all women uh, are here to help the, the, the feminine voice be heard. And it, we need to say you have to do it with humility, given the huge uh, things at stake in the climate and the ecology that are facing us, and also with respect to the beauty of the sea that brings us together, that protects us, and that uh, helps us to dream, and these pictures as well. So I'd like to thank you all, and I'll be by your side. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Ministre. Thank you, Mrs. Minister. Alors, avant de passer Before we move on terminer, to the last session, I'd like to salute the presence here today of men, 
qui j'ai beaucoup d'admiration. Francis Vallab, the president and founder of the French Maritime Cluster, who's always supported us and to derive value from the presence of women in the maritime sector. Bernard Roger, also the former ch uh, chairman of the Marine, and the chair, Stéphane Raison, who is the president and the Europa Directory. Thank you, gentlemen, for your support. And I also see Thierry Gauthier, who is the Director of Maritime Affairs. I think I haven't seen everybody, but thank you all for your presence. For, I'd like to conclude by call for action. We, we ask all maritime actors, both public and private, international, to commit and respect the ODDs 14 and 5 to uh, stop differences in salary, to hire women, and to develop loyalty to have more mixity in all levels, in companies and in public establishments, which is necessary for performance, balance, and sustainable development and development of the ocean. We wish within the governance and the tables of negotiation regarding the ocean that we ha seek on an ongoing basis mixity such that women as well as men can contribute together to the protection of the ocean and our common, our, our common uh, wealth. Thank you very much to all.